Nationally, the warning has been issued at the weekend that ultimate measures will be taken if the general public does not cooperate with COVID controls or if the virus begins to spread beyond control. This as COVID cases have appeared around much of the country. Locally in Rayong province, adjacent to our own and within a few kilometres of Pattaya, strict controls have been introduced following a huge outbreak in the city of Rayong, which has spread into rural districts. In the city itself, all entertainments, pubs, schools, gyms and more have been ordered to close, along with shops not selling essential food and medical supplies. For the rest of that province, outside the city limits, lighter controls are currently in place. And in Chiang Mai, COVID security has been enhanced after a woman from the Rayong area flew there from Utapau, later found to have the virus. And with the New Year exodus already in flow, seeing Thais return home for festivities, we can sadly expect many new outbreaks. All in all, the COVID situation has gone from minimal to seriously concerning within just a week, with the head of the Centre of Clinical Virology telling press that Thailand is still in its early stages, adding that many infected people will have little symptoms or be asymptomatic. Asymptomatic is not good for the population as the person shows no symptoms but does become a more dangerous carrier of the disease due mainly to his or her ignorance of the fact, hence the vital importance of wearing masks and keeping social distancing. Authorities, encouraged by the Prime Minister himself, are said to be close to nabbing locals' so-called officials in some areas who've colluded with those smuggling in illegals from neighbouring countries, and the general public has been encouraged to report any cases that they know of either illegal arrivals or illegal employment of those people. Around 26,000 people have been deported in this year alone back to Burma, and that's considered now to be the tip of an unwanted iceberg. There can be no doubt that the current leap in cases here is directly related to illegals arriving from neighbouring Burma, along with Thais who work there coming back and avoiding quarantine. However, to blame the workers would leave the employers here, many of whom employ illegally, without egg on their faces, And that's not a fair assessment. Without illegal work here, the migrants wouldn't have come, it's that simple. For now, though, the initial swathe of cases, much contained within the Burmese community here, has been overtaken by the number of cases involving Thai nationals. Since early in the year, Thailand has managed to retain a very low Covid count, mainly due to the majority of people here adhering to the regulations. At some time, those employers have to be held to account for encouraging illegals to come here, bringing with them the very virus that Thailand has fought so hard to avoid, but now it's too late. In Samutsa Khan, testing has evolved from nose swabs, which take 24 hours to produce results, to the latest blood testing, which is done with kits that generate results within 30 minutes. And it's hoped that this form of testing will become the norm nationally very quickly. Anyone who fails the test is quickly isolated, and then has further tests carried out. Meanwhile, here in our own city, several cases have been discovered, some but not all sourcing from a Huayai market, the Dao Dong close to the Sukhumvit, with other cases coming from other locations as a result of people feeling ill and being tested in at least one local hospital. The provincial officers sent out warnings to all who'd shopped at the market over the past 14 days to look out for symptoms This, as all markets throughout the region, have heightened safety precautions on entry and while people shop. Both our province and Rayong, along with around 35 others, are now listed as red zones, the worst of all categories available. City Hall emergency teams have been meeting through the weekend to put together several contingency plans, all designed for various stages that could be reached but have not been reached yet, meaning that the city is prepared. Here at Fabulous 103 FM, we've implemented a policy that no two people will work in the same room. All rooms will have ventilation and anyone in the studios will wear masks. And we now have a no-visitor policy. All our staff have agreed to a no-tourism policy too, which will see all remain close to home and not travel over the New Year period. Anyone feeling ill must leave the premises and go for medical checks, supplying a doctor's certification of health before returning. Sounds draconian perhaps, but we suggest similar to any business which considers staff a priority. Non-ties, that's you and I, are especially encouraged to make every effort to stick to the rules, and good behaviour right now is paramount. Last night saw one knuckle-dragging expat pushing female bar staff around and beat up a barkeeper in an otherwise virtually empty action street. 
he came off worse thanks to a local taxi driver who stepped in. Exactly the behaviour that we all need to avoid, especially now. And from all of us, with the reminder, mitts, masks and meters, wash your hands, wear a mask and keep social distancing. Above all, stay safe.